Hi guys, Fraser from Lifco Hydraulics. We have a piston pump inspection here. We're trying to figure out what went wrong with this one. It's only been in service for a few weeks and the customer had sent us a message saying it's leaking from the housing. Can you send us a new gasket? We said, certainly, here's a new gasket. What I should have said was, hmm, this is a little suspicious. Are you sure it's only just leaking because of a gasket? So let's take a look. Our customer purchased this pump back in March. They had a complaint that the housing gasket was split on it. They sent us some pictures. We went ahead and sent them a replacement gasket. No charge. They installed it. When they replaced the gasket, they wouldn't have actually looked down to see the retainer. Now, if they spun it, they might have might have sounded a little funny, but they probably just took it off, replaced the gasket, and put it back on. But when they said they were having trouble getting pressure, which which is just, they mean trouble producing flow, it, it likely was not producing any flow whatsoever. It was probably completely broken at that point. This is a PVP 41 with a standard pressure comp with a 3600 PSI max set. Okay, now we're into some stuff already. You come around here, that's not supposed to be there. It's either a barrel pin or one of these needle bearings in this bearing here. So that's initially not good. So we can see some varnishing on there. And that, also some metal shavings on there. So varnishing is usually like a chemical reaction in the oil. Let's see if this turns. Yeah, something's not gonna be good under there. So if I had to guess, the piston retaining ring is going to be broken. If it's missing a barrel pin, then this thing probably locked up. And look at that, piston retaining ring snapped in half. And barrel pins missing. The broken retainer, so that's the piston retainer, is caused by a large delta, which just means a difference between the case pressure and the suction pressure. So that means that if somebody were to have a poor suction inlet characteristics, or they were to have extremely high case pressure, it could crack that. High case pressure would also blow at the gasket of the housing. A lot of people think that if you have high case pressure, that the shaft seal was the first thing to go. The truth is, is that if it's fast enough of a pressure spike, that the housing will actually crack before the shaft seal. It's actually not caused by overpressurization. It's actually caused by a high difference between the suction pressure and the case pressure. So suction inlet characteristics or the high case pressure. In this case, it's likely a high case pressure because a high case pressure will also blow out a gasket. That the problem all started from a case drain that was not opened. They had maybe a ball valve on there. Left it closed, started it up, and it immediately blew out the gasket. And it also probably broke the retainer at that time. So we got one barrel pin, two barrel pins, Oh, there's the last one. The last one is sitting in there. So two of them were probably in place and one fell out. Retaining ring broke. It's broken in three different places. This is called a ball seat and it sits on top of the uh, barrel pins which sit in here. And then that holds the retaining ring. If this gets overpressurized or it's the shaft's off center, it causes this to break and one of these barrel pins to fall out, which looks like is what happened. It could be in their system, super sudden spike of pressure. Quick and sudden, like spike in pressure, can uh, cause stuff like this to happen. So when Damien say, said overpressurize, uh, that's not the system pressure. The only thing that could be sort of overpressurized would be the case pressure, which should basically be zero. And then you can see, so these pistons are going to be garbage too. See all that the marring on there? Yep. So that's called belling when they have sharp edges yeah. like that. I mean, this thing obviously spun for a little bit with, while these were broken, which obviously caused this damage. Yeah, it's probably gonna need a, a new rotating group, it looks like. Now, another interesting uh, little piece of information or evidence was the belled shoes. So those are their brass piston shoes. The belling of the shoes could have been caused by them running it after they had already broken the retainer. But the belling of piston shoes is something that happens gradually. So it happens when it's not so instantaneous. So it's a little bit strange that you have the belling and the broken retainer, but it could be explained by them just running it 
continuing to run it after the retainer had already broken. The housing should still be okay as long as there's no cracks or nothing. I did take a quick look. It doesn't look to be that bad. That just looks dirty. Let me clean it off here. So the shop itself looks pretty good. Just needs a quick clean. We'll replace the bearing, but I'd say that's reusable. There it goes. Checking the bushings uh, inside the, uh, the pins there. Yep. There it is. Looks like there's some very minor wear, but nothing indicating that uh, it would need to be replaced. Maybe the compensator stopped working properly and it wasn't relieving the pressure. Yeah, I mean, it's not common that it happened, but you know, nothing is broken there. Looks like there's some wear on this spool. Yeah, that needs to be replaced. And then barrel, pistons, retaining ring, barrel pins, ball seat, I think they all come in the same kit. The barrel pin was sitting out here, so it obviously shot out the barrel. Oh, so it binds and then all that force would just cause that to snap in half. But the reason why they weren't getting any pressure for sure is that the, the pump seems that it probably jammed up. What happened was they got a leak through the housing okay. and they took the back end off. They sent us pictures and in the pictures, the corner of the gasket was split, which is why we initially sent off the replacement gasket free of charge. So whenever we come across any sort of issues with the pump, we recommend the customer contacts us right away. We want to try to help these guys out. Snapping the retainer plate like that, they could have fired it up since they did a, a repair on it, shut the suction off so it doesn't drain the tank, put it all back on, jogged it, oh, suction's closed, open the suction, that's enough to break that. It's an instantaneous pressure differential between case and inlet. Yeah, we know it's instantaneous because it blew out the gasket. The, the case will fill up here and blow out the gasket faster than the shaft seal. If it's like a, a slow build, then the shaft seal will, will blow out first or nothing will happen to the housing. It's just, the pump will just stop working. What I was getting at with this, uh, the pump doesn't produce pressure. Think of it as you're trying to pump up uh, your tire. And so you have the pump and it's a hose connected to the tire. Now the pump could be working perfectly fine, but if there's a hole in the tire, then there's no pressure is gonna build up in that tire, which means it's the confined space that is building the pressure. You always want to describe it as saying, is the pump producing flow? And is it producing flow against a certain resistance? Stay tuned for more failure analysis. We never know what we're going to see until we open it up.